Hello folks. It's been a while since I've uh, done any muzzleloader videos, so I thought I might uh, make one today on a 1863 Remington, or Zouave as some people call them. This is actually an Italian reproduction, and I was up in Murfreesboro, Tennessee uh, this past week, and I ran across Stone River National Battlefield up there. So I stopped and looked at it. I'm a big Civil War nut. I've always enjoyed it. So I thought, hey, I'm gonna get the old uh, the old Zouave out and uh, do a little video on it, shoot it a little bit. So I've been out here this morning shooting it. Uh, Remington produced these uh, during the Civil War, uh, about twelve thousand of them, from from what I what I read. And uh, some people argue that a few of them got used in the Civil War, and then some people says they never got issued out. Uh, so I I don't know. Somewhere in between that lies the truth, but. Regardless, uh, this is a fine shooting little gun. Uh, it's 58 caliber, so it's not really a small gun. Uh, but it always, uh, these got the patch box. It always made me think of the 1841 uh, Harper's Ferry or Mississippi rifle. I always, for some reason, I always liked the patch box on, on the military firearms. Uh, it was just, just a little bit different, I guess. But uh, like I say, this one's a 58 caliber. Uh, a lot of these, uh, was imported. A lot of Italian companies uh, made these reproductions and kind of flooded the market. This one's actually from back, I think in the early 80s is actually when this when this uh, muzzle loader, I actually bought this down at Deer Creek Gun uh, several years back. I've shot it a lot, brass butt plate there, but a uh, fine shooting little gun. The uh, patch box does work, pops right open, you keep this one's got actually an extra nipple. Uh, a lot of these use as a uh, musket musket cap versus like a number 11 percussion cap. So that right there is a, is a nipple for a, a number 11 percussion cap. But uh, you could uh, you could shoot uh, round balls, uh, 570 round balls, or uh, a mini ball. And these are some that I, I've poured myself. Uh, this is a 575 uh, mini ball. It's a uh, 500 grain, so it's a lot of health to, to that that ball or that that bullet. Uh, or you can shoot uh, just a regular round ball. I've also pulled these round balls as well. Uh, but if I'm shooting a round ball, I'm gonna do it just like any other muzzle loader. I'm gonna shoot a uh, shoot it with a patch, just a patch ball. Uh, now back during the Civil War, these actually had uh, basically a cartridge you had wrapped in paper. Uh, you had your mini ball setting in it. You had powder on top of that, then it was twisted together. You could tear that off, pour your powder down there and there, and you could just stick that right down a barrel, or you can just do like I'm doing today, and just, just pour straight out of a, a little measuring thing here. So we're gonna shoot a couple times. We're gonna shoot one of each. It seems like it shoots better with a mini ball than it does a round ball for me, uh, but that's just my my uh, experience with it here. So we'll shoot the round ball first here. And what I'm using, uh, two elf powder today, um, I'm using, I'm just shooting uh, 60 grains. Of two elf here, so this is Go X. But there's other powders out there. I just like Go X. That there. This is a three land barrel, so I'm gonna get my powder down in there. Round ball. Put me a little lubricant on the on the patch. Now, I couldn't imagine loading one of these back in the day when somebody, either a Yank or a Rebel, was shooting at me. It put a whole different other twist on it than other than just out here in the backyard shooting. I think they said during the Civil War, a good march and get off three shots in a minute. I'd probably get off one in a minute and have to run back for a few hundred yards and then try to regain my composure. back in here there's a balance of little guns though if you ever get a chance to shoot one like i say this is a musket cap it's a, it's a lot bigger than your traditional cap uh you can pick these up i think they come 100 in a, in a box there but most all your old reproduction uh firearms uh use the musket cap so let's see what we can hit down here we just got some paper targets down here we're shooting at today so Somebody running. 
Now, a lot of these old rifles, they call them belt buckle guns. Uh, they was actually, and what that is, is if you're, you're basically shooting about six o'clock position, uh, the way a lot of them comes uh, to hit uh, where you're, you know, where you're trying to hit. If you're, if, say, if you're trying to hit the center target, I'll just aim down about six inches lower, depending on how, how far I'm shooting. But these was, was kind of more longer range. This here's got the flip up sights on the back here. Uh, closer range and then and then longer range right there and it even flips up on a little further there so some of them's graduated it actually tells you what it is these are not so but I, yeah i couldn't imagine trying to shoot nothing accurately out to where i've got to use that that big one up right there but back in the day there was a lot of marks and it could so uh but i'm not that kind of marksman so let's see what we can do here with her with her mini ball we're going to load it sound the same way we're going to put her powder Right there, you just kind of start it right in there. Now I'm using uh, a mixture of uh, Crisco and beeswax, actually, for my lube on those mini balls right there. There's, there's a lot of different ones. That's just what I've always, uh, what I've always used. Seems to work, work good enough for what I'm doing. Uh, just throwing a few balls here and there, every now and down range. So, all right. So let's see if we can. Get the old target again down range here, so. Get somebody's attention, for sure. I couldn't imagine uh, getting hit with one of those big things back during the war. Uh, it probably, it's, it's more of a, probably the velocity wasn't enough to really shoot slap through you. It was just uh, more of a rip and tear and uh, breaking bones as it went through, so. Uh, but yeah, if you ever get to shoot one of these rifles, uh, highly recommend it. Uh, I like shooting them. Like I say, I like the history behind the guns. Uh, the 1861 Springfield and the 1853 Enfield was probably the most widely used uh, rifles in the Civil War. But uh, these was kind of, a lot of people don't even know what this was if you talk to somebody about them. But there was, like I say, 12,000 of them made. Uh, but just not a lot of them seen action. I guess it was towards the end of the war and and they just they they kind of put on the side and, and didn't really need them but if you get a chance to shoot one i highly recommend it and uh, i think you'll enjoy it take care